today is my last working day in Rivella of the season. I thought I would take you along and show you around where I like to eat, what I like to see when I'm in Rivello. This is the main square of Rivello and that is the Duomo, the main cathedral. So looking down from the cathedral into the main square, we have a cafe culture, which is a lovely place to sit and have a drink or something to eat. And just to the right of that, there is just over there, this is Via Roma. This is one of the main streets. We'll go down there later. On the left hand side of the cathedral, you will find an alleyway there that heads towards the Villa Cimbrona, Villa Maria and Villa Eva. And then here you can see this big archway. This is the entrance to the Villa Rufula, beautiful gardens to go and visit. Now here you come to a place where the street goes off in two separate ways. It can be a bit confusing because if you look here, everything's got arrows both directions. And yes, you can go either way. It doesn't make any difference. It's about the same distance both ways. So go one way and come back the other. For now, we're going to take the left turning. This is a little frutteria. If you're fed up with all the pasta and pizza and you want something vaguely healthy, come in here, they'll make you smoothies, um, fruit salads, fruit kebabs, all sorts of things healthy. And just about 10 meters up here on the left hand side is one of my favorite places to stop for a quick lunch, the Babel Art Cafe. It's early at the moment, it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, so there's nobody here. Um, it's a real foodie food place. There's no pasta, no pizza, it's healthy, it's handmade, fresh breads, fresh um, mozzarella and burrata, really good stuff. It does take about 15 minutes to walk to the Villa Cimbrona from the centre of Rivello, but it's a lovely walk, just take it slowly, it's uphill part of the way, that's what you get on the Amalfi Coast. Another beautiful place to come and have a drink or something to eat is the Hotel Villa Maria. In the spring it's absolutely full of white wisteria, absolutely beautiful, and they have a lovely terrace restaurant which you can sit and relax on. I'm now in the gardens of the Villa Eva. This is a wedding venue. It is an absolutely beautiful gardens. There is a villa included, but you don't want to be in the villa, you want to be in the garden. Let me show you around. There is a giant chess set on the lawn there. And a beautiful little outside bar. Lovely outside dining area around this side of the villa with its own little kitchen. And then through here, this is where the wedding receptions are held. So if by chance it happens to rain or there's bad weather, the meal can be moved inside this canopied area here so you don't get wet. And then often the wedding ceremony takes place out on this little lawn here with this beautiful view of the Amalfi Coast below. Back out again. And we are carrying on looking towards the village in Barone. Now here where these two people are we have the gardens, the organic gardens of the Villa Maria which I just showed you. They already have all their winter vegetables planted. And look at the view from the vegetable garden. Lots of peppers still. I suppose they get more sun here than I do at my house. So my peppers are pretty much finished. So the entrance of the village in Barone is absolutely stunning and the rest of the inside is just as amazing, especially if you happen to be there in springtime when the wisteria is out. Um, I've got another video of a tour of the gardens of the village in Barone, so I'll link that below if you are interested in seeing what it's like inside. I now have to go and work for a bit. I have a wedding trial at the Hotel Giordano, so I will catch up with you in about an hour's time when I finished. Okay, it's two o'clock, that took about an hour and a half, but we spent most of the time chatting. 
Um, I am now going to go and get myself something to drink at Cafe Calcio and then we will continue with the tour of Ravello. To the left of the cathedral you will find this sloping pathway heading up to where all the big hotels are. There's a few interesting plaques around town that are worth hunting out. Top of the slope most people turn left. I'm just going to quickly turn right and show you something down here. E.M. Forster wrote the story of a panic here. So back in the other direction we go past these really peaceful gardens here. Sometimes you'll find me having lunch here and feeding the little kitties. The town hall is on your left hand side here quite useful for those getting married in a non-church wedding. The town hall gardens are called the Belvedere of the Principessa di Piedmonte. Now a lot of people get married in here. Luckily today it's open. So you will often see a wedding over in the corner over here. There's been a few things that I've wanted to show you that I haven't actually been allowed. I asked if I could film in the gardens of the Villa Ruffola. They said no, um, which is probably stupid. I shouldn't have asked because I'm sure every single tourist in there is filming. Um, and there was another little place that I wanted to film in and they also said no, they weren't interested. Now I'm going to try and show you the entrance of the Hotel Palazzo Avino. I'm obviously going to have to ask first, so fingers crossed. They said yes, so let's go inside the Palazzo Avino. Doorway to another world. The aroma just off the side of Cafe Calcio. Just before you hit the end of Via Roma, there's this restaurant, Quampo Cosima. Best place to come and eat for home cooked food, just like Nonna used to make. If you get time, if you're staying in Ravello for more than a few days, don't forget to check out Scala and its suburbs of Minuta and Pontone. Scala still has cobbled streets and Minuta is like going back in time. It's absolutely silent and there's never anybody around. Now this tiny church here, the Madonna dell'Ospedale, used to be a very small hospital for pilgrims and travellers. It was built into a cave and then later transformed into a rather spooky church. I mean, that is actually quite terrifying because I'm on my own. I don't know why I'm whispering. <gasps> visit the crypt. Uh -huh. I can't believe I'm doing this by myself. There's a big hole in front of me. Ooh, it's scary. I'm going to get <laughs> Right, we're now in a much quieter part of Ravello that a lot of people don't bother coming up to. This is, well, I call this Piazza Fontana. That's probably not its real name, but it's a piazza with a fountain in the middle of it, so it seems a sensible thing to call it. Walking straight on past the fountain, there's another little square here, which is definitely worth going to the edge for because it has got a fantastic view. If you're not staying in one of the big hotels, this is where you can get the sweeping view of the coast below. So that's my little tour of what to do in Ravello. Obviously there's the gardens to visit as well, the Villa Ruffola Gardens and the Villa Cimbrona Gardens, which should definitely not be missed. So that's my little tour of Ravello.